Hi guys, Alex the Vegan Gamer, playing Bayonetta, and we're starting Chapter 12, The Broken Sky. Let's go ahead. Kick some butt. I've got a fever, and the only cure is more dead angels. <laughs> more dead angels to cure your fever. Not sure how that works. Excuse me, sir. May I have my glasses back? Huh? Oh, yeah. Here He's lucky go. he didn't break them. Cereza, how did you get such magical glasses? <laughs> the glasses aren't magic, silly. I can see the monsters without them. Monsters? Not quite. So, uh, has Bayonetta, I mean your mom, been fighting these big bad monsters for a long time? Mummy is a witch, and witches protect people and are very strong. When I grow up, I'll be strong too, and I'll protect my mummy. <laughs> you think witches do what? Oh, forget it. She's a cutie. No point in arguing with a little kid. I'll manage on my own. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Shit. You never cease to amuse me, Cheshire. I suppose that's your next target? <laughs> Well, we're gonna have an airplane fight. You didn't cry while I was gone, did you? Nope. Good. Bayonetta. Nah, she was strong. No matter how I ask, no matter how many times, you always say the same thing. Come now, Kitty. You know it was all a misunderstanding. You're so stubborn. You know that. My father. He was a journalist too. In fact, he was twice the man I could ever hope to be. He was obsessed with one case his entire career. A case so bizarre it took over his life. They could have made a movie of the details. The followers oh. of darkness, the Umbra witches, and their light world counterparts, the Luminous. Those are the books that I have. Controlling everything with a power known as the eyes of the world. Then the light and dark clans suddenly disappear from their medieval home in Europe. You may be familiar with the town. You're standing in it. Welcome to Vigrid, 500 years later. 500 years? Each clan, working at the behest of the powers that be, sought to lead their fractured world towards peace. They both possessed an eye said to have the power to create history that they used to oversee the world. However, their spirit of cooperation did not last. For amongst them, a pair of young star-crossed lovers conceived a child that sent the clans on a path to ruin. The woman was thrown in jail and the man exiled from his clan. However, the child remained with the Umbra, raised as a black sheep even amongst the darkness. Since the balance between light and dark had been lost, both clans spiraled into decay. The legend had it that the two eyes could be united to control reality itself. And this legend fueled ambition and desire, leading to a myriad of battles between the clans. In fact, it led to their mutual destruction. And Bayonetta's dead child? My father was mocked for buying such a fairy tale. However, I believed his story. And I believe it more than ever now that I've found you. The memory of the clan lingers on, despite the passing of 500 years. What on earth was my father searching for? 
And why did he have to die for it? I have to discover the truth with my own eyes. That's why I haven't given up my chase for it. Or you. The head of the Ithaval group, the multinational that dominates Vigrid, recently tried to sell an enormous gemstone on the black market. If he isn't selling out in the open, it means we're going to have to acquire it by other means. And that starts by sneaking onto that jet. That jet is leaving. I'm gonna have to hurry. Copycat. Are you looking for something? I am. How did you lose it? Little one. Do you have anything you really like? Something really important to you? Yes, this. I love it. It's the same jewel she has around her neck. On her neck. On her chest, I should say. Where did you get this? You gave it to me, Mummy, for my birthday. When you love something, never lose it. Understand, little one? You must keep it safe, close to your heart. The thing I don't get, Bayonetta's very smart, but she doesn't realize the little girl looks a whole lot like her. I guess it's part of the story. Ah, she's gonna be taken away. Whoa, superhero like. Very Indiana Jones like. Yeah, that's my favorite scene from the movie from Indiana Jones. Was it Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first one? The plane scene, that's a good scene. Bye plane. What's up with the techno music? Alright! Military transport, Valkyrie interior. Cool! Where are the monsters? What the heck? What the heck just happened? Ow! I did not notice that at all. Why is the floor breaking everywhere? That's kinda weird. Ow! There's another monster breaking the floor? Why is he doing that? Or another magical girl? Yeah, it seems like hair. Hair magic. Whoa. Whoa, careful, careful! Oh! <laughs> I can check it. It bears the seal of the sun. But look at all the pipes it is connected to. This is no simple object. Uh huh. What is it gonna do? Okay. 
type of generator or something? That doesn't do anything. Oh, it's Angel. It's an Angel uh, that uses uh, hair magic. Well, it just broke. I always like going back to see if there's like hidden objects. Whoa! Dragon there. What did I just get? Valkyrie Military Transport. Alright, so I'm gonna read that later. Dangerous place to be in. Do I just jump down? Should I fly? How cool is that? Hurry up, Bayonetta! Oh, come on! Let's turn this wheel! Any other monster here? Kissy kissy. Alright, pure platinum. That's awesome. Let's go get this book. Whoa, that door is obviously gonna open. Ah. Alright, you guys. So, that's a gate of hell. I will go there and uh, I'm also gonna read books. So I guess the books. Whoops, wrong button. Select and let's go to the files. So I would think that Antonio is Cheshire's dad. I'm not sure. But it would make sense in the story since he's a journalist as well. And he talks a lot about discovering all the different witches and stuff like that. So I would think so. But anyways, um, right now I'm going to save. And I'm also going to read. So for you guys that are not necessarily interested in the reading part, I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget to save the animals and kick some monsters but. And for you guys that are interested, I'm going to read these two books, these two pages, I guess. The Valkyrie Military Transport. Unfitting for a city of its small size, Figrid plays host to a large military airbase. The roar of takeoff and landings that engulf the city are not that of a passenger's planes but of incredible large military transport jets known as Valkyries. So I guess right now we're in a Valkyrie? I have been aboard American military transports many times in an official capacity 
and have seen many of these finest jets up close. However, none compares to even a distant view of a Valkyrie. The size difference is clearly evident, like the difference in size between a crow and an eagle. To think that something that large could fly in the sky is something that I still cannot believe, despite having seen it with my own eyes. Of course, there's no doubt that the cargo it carries is quite dangerous. So seeing the plane's huge mass literally drop onto the runway during landings causes me to feel a deep anxiety, as if the weight of the plane were literally landing on my shoulders. My goodness, he gets <laughs> anxious quite easily. Um, it leads one of the it leads one to wonder what the authorities are bringing into this little principality with all the extreme security they have in place. Figured has long since cut most ties with the outside world and has reared itself within its own unique culture. Perhaps it is this influence that lead to the Valkyrie's equally unique design. At a glance, one can see the deep religious influence in its design, or perhaps that view is simply our difference to a plane born of technology so different, so different from her own that we simply nod our heads in astonishment at the miracle of flight. Huh, okay. <laughs> nice plane, I like Valkyries. <laughs> the Charlehorn. Charlehorn? I don't know, too sure if I'm saying that correctly. A strategic defense initiative. Alright, let's read this book. At the center of the man-made island of Isla del Sol, there is a display of sheer military force unimaginable for the likes of Vigrid, a display whose menacing power even I cannot shake. While there is very little public face to these efforts, if my information is correct, the military spending here rivals that of even the great powers of the world in the world. Very good military there. Uh, moreover, amongst the towers of enterprise and government, other buildings stand as anti-aircraft countermeasures. These buildings, a strategic defense initiative known as the Horns, are equipped with a battery of anti-aircraft SAM missiles and have been placed in four corners of the island. I guess we'll be seeing these soon. The Jarlahorn? <laughs> what in the world would cause a small place like this to install such dramatic defenses? There is also word that the Americans are involved in the armament and expansion of the military complex here. It is said that the Itavol group is undertaking some sort of next generation energy research and thus has traded rights to this technology for added force of arms. It is not a wholly unbelievable story. Seeing all the military takeoffs and landings here in Vigrid, I don't want to think their destination is actually the place I call home. Yeah, you don't want your place to be bombed. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Maybe I don't get it. In Canada here there's not a lot of force. Quite lucky. Especially when we see all that's happening around the world. Alright, let's go enter the gates of hell. 